welcome to stream again in today's video we are going to see about the previous question of 2018 prelims and this sources that is the question paper and the answer sheet are obviously obtained from upsc website so there is no need for you to get written that where the source are from fine so you can also download it from the upsc official website so let me see uh, the first 10 questions of the upsc 2018 question paper along with the 10 questions that i have prepared from the current affairs fine so these are the things and most important thing in each and every video i would say that please prepare your preparation in a mindset of serving the people not ruling the people fine so that is the first thing that a civil servant need to have and always be prepared your preparation with a mindset of india's interest if you want to know more about the india's interest go and see my video how to prepare for upsc or ias examination for beginners part one that is in my youtube channel fine so let's move on to this um video fine so our first question of this booklet is that consider the following statements in in the first Lok Sabha, the single largest party in the opposition was the Swatarna party. In the Lok Sabha, a leader of opposition was recognized for the first time in 1969. In the Lok Sabha, if the party does not have a minimum of 75 members, its leader cannot be recognized as the leader of opposition. Which of the following statement given above is or are correct? So the answer for this is if you see it's B. Fine. For your convenience i am zooming it up okay so this is it so option b so for this if you go for the explanation the answer for this is option b why because is that for you to say that a person as a leader of opposition if the party has acquired at least 10 percent of the seats in Lok Sabha so if a party acquires at least 10 percent of the seats in Lok Sabha, then the lead, then the party can represent a person as a leader of opposition from their representation. Fine. So this is the thing. And during the first of the Lok Sabha, there is no party like this was started the party. Fine. So and in Lok Sabha, the party does not have a minimum sanctuary members. See, as I said before, if the party has 10% of the seats, that is far enough for to become a leader of opposition it's not come particularly to the top the 75 members okay so this is the thing fine so this is the answer and this is the explanation so let's move up to the second question which of the following leaf modification occurs in the desert areas to inhibit water loss see for this answer is option c fine so that is three c one uh, third one fine so as we see the modifications will be thorny instead of leaves see the transpiration will be so much higher in deserts so if the transpiration is more and the water is less in the area automatically the water content in the uh, trees or the plants will get evaporated so there is a greater chance that the trees go out of water so because of this uh, the desert uh, plants or the trees gets modified into thorny instead of a soft leaves so this is the phenomenon behind it and the third question is as per the naso sounding ground situation assessment survey of agriculture also consider the following statement rajasthan has the highest percentage share of agricultural household among its rural household out of the total agricultural household in the country a little over 60 percentage belong to obc in kerala a little over 60 percentage of the agricultural household reported to have received maximum income from sources other than agricultural activity see the answer for this is option c one and two only see the national uh, survey and statistic organization that is the naso is actually works under the ministry of statics and program implementation so they issue so many statistical data regarding the government uh, schemes as well as the conditions of the country so among that this in the 70th round an assessment has been given in that assessment these two things that is the one and three are the correct 
so that's what we need to know because this report will be asked based on the current affairs okay so 2018 current affairs is not that much relevant for us in 2020 preparation fine so how is the national green tribunal ngt different from that of the central pollution control board cbc see the ngt has been established by an act whereas cbcb that is the central pollution control board has been created by an executive order of the government the national green tribunal provides environmental justice and help reduce the burden of the litigation in the higher courts whereas the central pollution control board promotes cleanliness of streams and wells and aims to improve the quality of air in the country which of the statements given above is or are correct the answer for this is two only since they asked for the correct statement okay what is the difference fine what is the difference between them okay so if you take the first point the national green tribunal has been created by an act like that same manner the central pollution control board is also created based on the water act but this in this statement it's saying that it is produced by an executive order of the government so it is not at all correct and the option uh, the second point is a correct manner so the obviously the answer will be option b that is two only so you can see they have given the answer as b fine so the next question the question is consider the following the parliament of india can place a particular law in the ninth schedule of the constitution of india the validity of a law placed in the ninth schedule cannot be examined by any court and no judgment can be made on it so which of the statements given is or are correct so the answer for this is option a that is one only because if you take the ninth schedule the ninth schedule has been proposed and has been included by jawaharlal nehru uh, mostly for the land reforms that need not to be get uh, judicial review so the ninth schedule during the jawaharlal nehru period has been put in the constitution that can't be get judicial review but after 1973 especially kesavananda badari case that the, um, the supreme court has just struck down and strictly said that if the ninth schedule any of the laws if it violates the fundamental rights of the people then it need to be get uh, reduced or just modified so they said that that the ninth schedule would be get into judicial review so the first statement is correct and second statement for now it's not correct so the answer for this is obviously a so so option a is the correct answer fine so which of the following best describes the term merchant discount rate sometimes seen in the news so the incentive given by the bank to the merchant by ac accepting payments through debit cards pertaining to that banks the amount paid back by the banks to their customers when they use debit cards for financial transaction for purchasing goods and services the chance charged to the merchant by a bank for accepting payments through his customers through the bank's debit cards the incentive given by the government to merchants for promoting digital payments by their customers through point of sale machineries and debit cards so the answer for this is option c why because is that merchant discount rate is a rate nothing but the bank okay the bank raises uh, a charge for the merchant for example if you are going to a shop and just buying something and just insert your card in the point of sale machine that is uh, the machine that the shop owner will use to get the money out of your pocket that is out of your debit card or credit card that is what all the point of sale machine okay for doing that the merchant that is the owner of the shop will get uh, will get paid okay will need to pay a fee to that the bank so that is so the seventh question is what is is or are the consequences or the consequence of a country becoming the member of the nuclear suppliers group it will have access to the latest and most efficient nuclear technologies it automatically became a member of the treaty on the non proliferation of nuclear suppliers group that is npt 
So which of the following given above these are all correct? So the answer for this is option A. That is one only. So if you take what is a nuclear suppliers group is nothing but uh, it is a group which provides the resources that is the source that is uranium to the nation which have the nuclear uh, technology. Fine. So India is uh, struggling so much to enter in this nuclear suppliers group so that we can have more nuclear resources that is the uranium. Fine. But China is always opposing us and saying that we don't have signed this uh, non-proliferation treaty. Okay, so for joining into that suppliers group, the consequence is that we need to have a more efficient nuclear technologies that we have now. Okay, so this is the consequence that a country can have in joining this nuclear suppliers group. But the second point won't affect because even if you are not signing this non-proliferation treaty, you can become a member of this nuclear suppliers group. But most of the countries that are nearly all these countries who are in the nuclear supplies group are already signed this non-proliferation treaty for india india is trying to join with this nuclear supplies group but china is always blocking us from entering into this nuclear supplies group by saying that we are not signed the non-proliferation treaty so regarding non-proliferation treaty the non-proliferation treaty is nothing but a signature of a country that ensures that we won't use nuclear weapons unnecessarily for the destruction purpose. So this is what simply for your understanding this non-proliferation treaty is all about. Okay. So the answer for this question is option A. Fine. So let's move to the next question. With, with reference to India's decision on leaving an equalization tax of 6% on online advertisement services offered by a non-resident entity, which of the following statement is correct? It is introduced as a part of the Income Tax Act non-resident entities that offer advertisement services in India can claim a tax credit in their home country under the double taxation avoidance agreement. Select the current statement using the code given below. So the answer for this is option D, neither one nor two. Fine. So before going to that, you need to know what is equalization tax. The equalization tax is nothing but a tax that is deviated for availing uh, services. Okay, uh, services who is not permanently established in India, for example, Google. Okay, so this equally taxation tax is nothing but a tax that is deviated on Indian resident. For example, I am running a company. Okay, I am running or else you running a company in India. For your company's advertisement, you are using Google, like Google Actions to advertise your com about your company so that you are paying google a particular amount of money so from that particular amount of money if it exceeds one lakh rupees then a six percent of that particular amount need to be given and paid as tax to government okay so this is what equalization tax is all about fine so this is so regarding the two statements that is given below it is not introduced as a part of income tax act fine and number two this tax has been paid by the resident who is in india so there is no need for google or else the company who is providing the service to claim a tax or need to pay a tax to government of india or else need to be get paid okay their taxes in their own country fine so there is no involvement of double taxation avoidance agreement here so for your understanding the double taxation avoidance agreement is nothing but an agreement between two nations for india india is currently uh, nearly this that simply that it, they will say that uh, agreement with 88 countries fine so Regarding this agreement, a company can pay its tax either in India or else in its own country. Okay. The tax, it can pay the tax either in India or else in its own country who didn't have a permanent establishment in India. If a permanent establishment has been made in India, that company need to pay its taxes in India. So this is what you need to know from this question. And 
the answer for this is option A. Let's move to the next question. So the next question is consider the following statement. The physical responsibility and budget management FRBM reviews committee report has recommended a debt to GDP ratio of 60% for the general combined government by the 2023, comprising 40% for the central government and 20% for the state government. The central government has the domestic liability of 21% of GDP as compared to the top 48% 49% of the GDP of the state governments. As per the Constitution of India, it is mandatory for the state to take the central government's concept for raising any loans if the foreigner owes any outstanding liabilities to the letter. So, which of the statements is or or is or are correct? So, the answer for this is option C. So, one and two only. So, regarding this question, what you need to know is about the physical responsibility and budget management. Okay, so this physical responsibility and budget management act is nothing but an act that makes the government more accountable. Okay, so it helps in maintaining the physical deficit of government of India. Fine. So now the physical deficit has been pegged to three percent by FRBM. Okay, but this FRBM has been acquired from. Uh, most developed nation so we are using it in a more liberalized manner that uh, it is picked in a more increased manner in developed countries is nearly one percent but now we are using at a three percent relaxation okay because we are developing country fine so according to that review committee report the first option uh, that is one first point is correct fine and the second point is not correct regarding it and the third person third point is correct as per the constitution of india it is mandatory for a state to take the central government concern if he is it is if the state is having any liability towards the central government so the option c that is one and three only is the right answer so consider the following statement Next question, consider the following statement. The quantity of imported edible oil is more than the domestic production of edible oils in the last five years. The government does not impose any customs duty on all the imported edible oils as a special case. See, it is an easy question. Fine. The option one is right. We are importing more edible oils, but option two is wrong because each and every goods that we import, we impose a customs duty. So because of that custom duty, our local players, our local producers, that is the Indian producers, will have an hand upper than that of the imported items. Because the value of that product that is produced in India will have a lower value when compared to the top of the importer. So because we are leaving customs duty, the imported items will be more valued, more higher in price in the market so that our uh, local domestic players will get more advantage. So the answer for this is option A only. Fine. Right, let's check up the current affairs question. Question number one. The CSO which calculates the sex ratio in India works under which ministry? Ministry of Home Affairs, Ministry of Statistic and Program Implementation, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Ministry of Science and Technology. So the answer for this is option B. Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. So if you take regarding Ministry of Statistic and Program Implementation, it is a ministry that runs CSO as well as NSO. So NSO is National Statistics uh, National Sample Statistics Organization or Office. Now it has been converted to Office because it includes autonomy and it now comes under Ministry of Statistics or Implementation. Okay. So regarding CSO, CSO is the Central Statistics Office. Because it is organization, now it's an office that comes under Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. Fine. So what's the functions of CSO is nothing but they are providing the statistical report of most of the programs that have been implemented in India by the government. Fine. So these are the things that you are seeing now is the functions that is coordinating of statistical activities in India and evolving and maintaining statistical standards, national income accounting, conduct of annual survey of industries, economic census and its follow up surveys 
compilation of index of industrial production as well as consumer price index see consumer price index is one of the most important index index fine in calculating the inflation rate in india that is inflation rate in any of the countries fine so the consumer price index is very much important in your economy as concerned fine so these are the things and it is located in new delhi obviously fine the next question is which of the following related to the digital india core components fine so these are the options secure and stable digital infrastructure digital government services universal digital literacy pradhan mantri gramin digital shankar ghar yojana fine so these are the options that were given to you so the answer for this is obviously option b 1 2 and 3 see the first three are the core components and the fourth one is an yojana that comes under digital india fine so the pradhan mantri gramin digital shankarta yojana is nothing but a yojana which helps in providing optical fiber connectivity that is the internet connectivity to each and every villages in india so that's what the yojana is all about and regarding the option regarding the digital india fine so digital india is nothing but a campaign by the government to provide e governance that is e services of the government to all the people so that's what the main theme of digital india so for your definition digital india is a campaign launched by the government of india in order to ensure the government services are made available to citizens electronically by improved online infrastructure and by increasing internet connectivity or by bank making the country digitally empowered in the field of technology fine so it has the three core components that is the development of the digital infrastructure and providing e governance that is providing all its services through electronic medium number third is universal digital literacy fine the universal digital literacy is very important that in india nearly 40 percent of the people is only using internet and nearly 60 percent of the people are not at all using internet services so there is a very much lag in the digital literacy fine so to overcome that particular thing government of india is so much eager to give digital internet education that is internet education fine so digital literacy they are focusing more on fine so let's move up to the third question the third question is the statue of unity is located along which of the rivers fine so these are the four rivers that are given to you for your consideration so along this the answer is option a narmada see in the narmada is passing through three states fine uh, its origin is in the narmada kun in uh, in uh, Mah madhya pradesh and from there it flows from Madhya Pradesh and then it reaches Maharashtra and then through uh, Gujarat it then enters into Arabian Sea through Gulf of Kambal. Okay, so this is the course of Narmada. Along this course of Narmada, the Statue of Unity, that is the Statue of Unity is located. Fine. So these are the things that you need to know. The next question is that the safe zone proposed by the Turkey comprises of the borders of which of the following country fine so these are the options that are given to you turkey syria iraq and armenia so the answer for this is option b fine one two and three so why is that is if you see in the picture that there is a fight that is going on between kurdish uh, syrian fighters and the turkey fine turkey's government so there is a uh, fight so because of america's support that is america insisted you need to give time so turkey has given them and five days that is uh, five days time uh, for their evacuation and get enter into the safe zone so this safe zone has been proposed by turkey and this safe zone is along the course that touching in turkey and Syria as well as Iraq. So Turkey is bordering Syria as well as Iraq. So thus the safe zone proposed is touching three countries. One is Turkey, one is Syria and another one is Iraq. 
Fine. So these are the things that you need to know. And third one, fifth one is Nobel Peace Prize winner of 2019. So the options were given to you. So these are the four options. So the answer for this is Abhijit Ahmad. So who is the Prime Minister? Fine. So Abhijit Ahmad is the one winner of uh, Nobel Peace Prize. And the others are Abhijit Banerjee is for economics, who is an Indian, and James Peebles, who is an physicist, and Araki Yoshin, uh, Yoshino, who is chemistry for getting the uh, lithium ion batteries get invented. So, James Peebles is for the uh, concept of black hole theory, and Abhijit Banerjee is for their work on trials in economics. Fine. So these are the things that you need to know. So the next Chief Justice of India is the next question. So next Chief Justice of India, who is the next Chief Justice of India? You are given the options. So the answer for this is option A, Ranjan Gopal, option B, uh, Sharad Aravind Popte, N V Ramana and Arun Kumar Mishra. So these are the four options. Along these options, the answer for this is obviously Sharad Aravind Bob. He is going to be the next Chief Justice of India. So the present Chief Justice of India is Ranjan Gokai. And the next two, option C and D, are the next senior most uh, judges in the Supreme Court of India. Fine. So this is the picture of Sharad Aravind Bob. Fine. So let's move to the next question. Question number seven, plan B. Related to the conservation of which of the following animals from which man-made activity? Fine, these are the options B and telecommunication towers, elephants and railways, beers, beers and the roadways, burial and pollution. So the B plan is all about elephants and railways. So the option is option B. Fine. So what is this elephant and railways is all about is that in the east northern frontier, okay, in the east northern frontier railways, there is so much pollution between elephant and that train okay that is the railways in the level crossing because why because is that the, it is more forested area and it is more hilly area and there is more uh, elephants are there so when they are crossing they are not at all considering the railways so this has become a big problem for the northeast frontier railways so what they are doing is that they are fixing a particular machine that is a particular device so this device what it do is it will bust the sound of swarming bees that is a flying bees fine a group of bees that is flying which is called the swarming bees so this sound will keep the elephants away from the level crossing nearly 600 meters fine so what this device will do is that it will emit this sound because of high decibel Elephants have such very good ears. So because of this high decibel, they can't hear it. They can't hear it more so that it will be very disturbing for them. So then they will change their course. So this is the idea that the Northeast Frontier Railways is looking upon. Fine. So the next question is, what are the types of subsidies that come under prohibited subsidy of World Trade Organization? Fine. So these are the options that were given to you. Providing subsidy in export by a country to decrease the demos, uh, domestic goods of importing country subsidies that were given to recipients to make a certain amount of exports third subsidies that were given by a country to its exports but not affect the domestic market or player of the import country so the answer for this is option b one and two so let's be see World Trade Organization has two types of subsidies, that is goods subsidies. Sorry, I mentioned it as goods, but actually it's subsidies. Two types of subsidies in World Trade Organization. Number one is prohibited subsidies. Number three, two is actionable subsidies. Fine. So in prohibited subsidies, the subsidies that are prohibited are if a country is giving subsidies so that its goods can be get pumped into an another country's economy that is prohibited number two if the subsidy given by a country will degrade the domestic players of another country that is also prohibited fine for example if australia is giving subsidies more 
or sugar produced that is going to get imported in India. Fine. So that subsidy will get affect the Indian players of that is Indian farmers then that subsidy is prohibited by World Trade Organization. So this is what you need to know that is prohibited subsidies and in actionable subsidies the actionable subsidies are nothing but even if a country for example Australia is giving subsidies for the sugar can produce but that subsidy is not going to get any effect on the country that is Indian players as well as other person who are exporting sugar can to India then that subsidy is not at all prohibited it is actionable fine so these are the two types of subsidies that were given by World Trade Organization fine so the next question is what are the functions of NIDAC so New Delhi International Arbitration Council fine so what are their functions that's what this question is all about the options is facilitating and connecting of arbitration in professional time bound and cost effective manner promoting the studies in the field of alternate dispute resolution number three conducting research on alternate dispute resolution fine so the answer for this is option c one and two one d so if you take NIDAC has functions as well as objectives so you need to be very clear while studying about NIDAC fine so the function is that it's going to conduct the arbitration in a professional time bound and cost effective manner that is its function and also its function is to give study that is it also need to study about the field of arbitration dispute resolution so that it can give more ideas number uh, its objectives are very different promoting research it's going to do research it's its objective fine its function is actionable its objective is fine its objectives is different its functions is different fine so its objectives is that promoting research it's an aid okay it's what's its objective okay its objective is promoting promoting research promoting facility to administer assistance for the conduct of arbitration, mediation, and conciliation proceedings. Okay. Number third is maintaining a panel of, of aggregated professionals to conduct arbitration. So these are its objectives. So let's move up to the next question. Non-permanent members who have their term till the end of 2020. So these are the options that were given to you. Fine. So the question is all about who is going to remain in the non-permanent members panel till the end of 2020. Fine. So the answer for this is option D. 1, 2, 3 and 4 and 5. Fine. So before going to this, you need to be very clear about the non-permanent members of United Nations Security Council. Fine. So there are 10 non-permanent members in the Security Council. Among these 10 non permanent members, each and every year, 5 members will get replaced by another 5 non permanent members. Fine. So, what's the basic concern is that all the 10 members will enjoy 2 year term. Okay, fine. So, in 2021, India, uh, sorry, in 2020, India is going to be a non-permanent member representing in uh, Asia. Fine. So, in 2020, these five members will remain along with India. Okay, when India is entering into the non-permanent seat, uh, these five members will already in the five member, uh, already in the non-permanent member seat. Okay, by the end of 2020, this 5 members will get replaced by another 5 members, but still India will be there. India will enjoy a 2 year term. That is, if India is elected at the beginning of 2020, India will enjoy the non permanent seat till the end of 2022. Okay, in 2023, India will be replaced by another nation. Fine. So, each and every member will enjoy a 2 year term, and there are 10 non permanent members. Fine. So this is the framework of United Nations Security Council and there are five permanent members which are called the P5 nations. 
so they are the united states of america united kingdom germany sorry france, not germany france um, china and russia so these are the five nations who are under p5 fine so this is what you need to know from this question fine so if you are new to this channel subscribe to the channel and also click on the bell icon so that you won't lose any of my videos and also visit my website www.iasteamiaspreparation.co.in and if you want to follow facebook twitter or pinterest that link is also given in the description box below and the website is also given on the description box below and like this video share this video and comment on your doubts questions and queries i will definitely answer those questions and don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching and all the best for your protection.